Your theme for today, Critical Minds for Critical Times, Media's Role in Advancing Peaceful, Just, and Inclusive Society. That is the U.S. global theme. My own understanding of this theme of Critical Minds for Critical Times is to call on the Ghanaian media, led by you, Alfred Money, to be innovative in what you do. Critical Minds for Critical Times. And that the Ghanaian media must position itself to respond to contemporary challenges and contemporary storms that can undermine the progress of your work. Undoubtedly, the media have played its role in our democratic journey and its evolution and its deepening. And we should commend you for the phenomenal contribution to the building of a just and inclusive society, even though we are not at the perfect society yet. But Mr. Chairman, permit me today to make an attempt to, re to reword your topic, even though it lies within your mandate. And that is akin to my duty as a member of parliament. That is why even the Freedom of Information Bill is subject to parliamentary scrutiny. So in scrutinizing your team, Ghana still in search of right to information law and the broadcasting law is parliament in a dilemma. If I had my own way, I would substitute it for Ghana in the process of passing twin legislations of right to information and right to broadcasting bill, and they would be enacted to law. Therefore, Ghana is not in search of it. Neither is parliament in a dilemma. We are just on the road, and we are searching and searching very closely towards the passage of the twin bills of right to information bill and the broadcasting bill. One can understand your ambivalence and your disappointment, both in the executive and in parliament, but be assured of our commitment to pass into law these two important legislation. So as I discuss this subject, I intend to deal with them on independent basis. My first comment will be on the broadcasting bill which is easier to deal with for my purpose, after which I will conclude on the right to information bill and then prefer some suggestions to uh, getting it. So, Honorable Chairman, if you permitted me, uh, the topic for Ghana is Ghana still in search, will now be Ghana in the process of legislating and ensuring the enactment into law of a freedom of information bill and a broadcast bill. Indeed, I had the opportunity to serve as Minister for Communication, and I still recall with some nostalgic feeling, Madame Kwame is here, Alex, as I remember the discussions in Ada on this particular legislation as far back 2013. Let me pay tribute to you and your husband, and to say that by the time I left office as Minister for Communication, I had conveyed same to the Minister for Information for co-sponsorship of the bill to cabinet for it to proceed to parliament for passage. Therefore, there is no debate about a national commitment and a national consensus for Ghana to have a broadcaster law to regulate the broadcaster regime of our country. We need, for instance, to regulate the distinction between community radio and public service radio and commercial radio. And you can only do so within the remit of a broadcasting law. We need to redefine the role of the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, popularly referred to as GBC, whether it is indeed a national broadcaster or a state broadcaster, to help them solve the quagma of their own name, whether it is a national broadcaster or a state broadcaster. And how will it relate? to other media houses. So I should say that there is a commitment of a bill and a law to improve the landscape of broadcasting generally in Ghana and to regulate broadcasting and to define it within the court, uh, within the ambit of distinguishing between community radio, commercial radio, and public service broadcasting. Indeed, today as we speak, we have 506 licensed FM stations in Ghana. That itself makes a compelling necessity for a regulated broadcast arena in Ghana. 381 of them are functional, and they are functional. 
And Mr. Chairman, again, permit me in uh, commending uh, Dodge on criti critical minds for critical times. Again, one of the things that I discern from today's team in asking the Ghanaian media to be innovative is that even within our broadcaster legislation, the context, and I'm sure the Minister for Information may have read his mind to it, if he's not able to do it and it comes to Parliament, who assist to do it, is just to correct, and I'm sure, Mrs. Kwame, you bear me witness, it was to deal with the tough issue between the National Media Commission, as required by the Constitution, and the National Communications Authority as to who regulates content, in particular technical content. That's the only controversial issue I'm aware was what was tearing apart our quest to have a broadcasting legislation. The National Communications Authority is also established by law to regulate the sector with technical competence. You have a National Media Commission, which is a creation of the 1992 Constitution by virtue of Article 168 of the Constitution, which has to work in partnership with the National Media Commission to regulate the sector. So like it or not, today, the regulator of the FM is not just the National Communications Authority, but the National Media Commission. And therefore, Parliament cannot be in a dilemma in our quest to ensure that each of them deliver per their mandate and mission, and to reconcile legislating to sit with the appearing legislation was what was required to improve the particular uh, legal regime to regulate the broadcast sector. The other matter, Minister for Information and to members of the media, was repositioning and defining GBC as a public broadcaster akin to maybe the BBC or the Al Jazeera or the CNN of the world within the context that you situate them to be able to cope and run with other sectors of the media, particularly those that are community owned, which is non-profit, whose objects are different from those that are commercial FM stations who are driven by profit. Chairman, let me now deal with some legal issues on this particular bill. And Chairman, I am particularly happy that in, your, in the opening remarks of the president of the GJA, he admitted what today we can celebrate as the triumph of the Ghanaian media. And your triumph is under the 1993 Constitution of Ghana. Fortunately for you, the freedom of expression and freedom of the media and independence of the media is not at the pleasure of the executive nor parliament is guaranteed constitutionally by virtue of the provisions of Article 1262168 and Article 21 of the 1992 Republican Constitution. So be assured that your freedom is a given. That is why Article 12 enjoins the executive, parliament, and the judiciary to respect and uphold fundamental freedoms and human rights, including media freedoms, as guaranteed under Article 162 of the Constitution. We are particularly excited that today the president of the GJ is now reporting to his Congress. When I say Congress, this grouping of World Press Freedom Day of any of our practicing and functionary journalists on trial or in jail. At least if you recall the Eben Kwaku's day, Excellency Haruna Ate is here, Kweku Baku is not here, George Nachini is not here. You would know that Ghana have gone beyond the dark days and therefore your unfettered freedom should not be taken for granted. And be assured, the executive, my colleague, will speak with it. Parliament, I can speak for it by virtue of my new position. Be assured that Parliament will not legislate on any legislation that will seek to transgress, strangulate, or censor the Ghanaian media. And therefore, we will support the executive to increase your freedoms and the enjoyment of those freedoms. Anytime I hear politicians rushing to court, I ask myself whether those politicians uphold the value that even a defense to libel and defamation with my little knowledge of the law, the public interest becomes a prudent defense of it. I did it in the public interest. So you journalists, tomorrow, when we are worrying, you will just say that my action is justified in the public interest. But but Chairman, the public interest is guaranteed under law. That leads me to my third admonition. And Chairman of GJA, 
to call on you to demand responsibility and circumspection from the Ghanaian media and that they should not hurt reputations deliberately, be it personal reputation or corporate reputation. Therefore, we are not in a dilemma. We can only wait for my colleague, the Minister for Information, working with his colleague, Minister for Communication. And like I said, at the time, it was a split ministry. So I'm sure I have seen a draft that I forwarded to the Minister of Information in a formal letter in 2013 for them to proceed for us to co-sponsor it. Once he brings it, you are assured that it's law. And therefore, the assurance is that we are not in a dilemma. We are only waiting for the executive to introduce it in parliament and will do what is right and what is just. Chairman, I was commending the Ghana Journalists Association and to recall the events of the dark days where in the practice of your profession, you became subjects of an existing criminal libel law then. I know the role that Professor uh, Audrey and Co played Together with my colleague Joe Bedou and sir, not many of you are too familiar with it. I used to work with him at the International Press Center here, probably with another name that I'll keep secret until when it's appropriate to name it, to work for the enhancement of media freedoms and other freedoms in Ghana. I was therefore not surprised when he was called upon to work on, at the National Media Commission to which Chairman now graciously shared. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that leads me now to the controversial Freedom of Information Bill. And again, be assured that Parliament, we are not in a dilemma. When legislations are introduced in Parliament, I can show you a copy of the Freedom of Information Bill 2016, which was gazetted October 2016, an improved bill. And distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Chairman, let me just highlight on it and you appreciate why it was not passed, even though I'll respond to the political question. And the political question then, the Honorable Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Doa Jaho, and I'll urge you, President of GJ and your colleagues, to read the parliamentary answer of the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th January of Parliament before the swearing in of the new government. The Honorable Doa Jaho, when he took his chair as Speaker of Parliament, then moved to the, what he called the final consideration stage of the Freedom of Information Bill. That was to give a terminal end to the process of completing it for us to await presidential assent. We say it as it is. At the time, I'm sure the minority then had become the majority. So they said, no, we won't cooperate with you. Why all this while you didn't pass the Freedom of Information Bill? We will frustrate you. So it became a, the politics of legacy, whose legacy it will be to get a Freedom of Information Bill. Ghana is above that petty partisan politics. There was a commitment by the Speaker as he introduced a bill for us to bring finality to it. Thankfully, there can be no political score or gains in this. I'm sure now let me acknowledge our sweet lady who represents the Coalition for Freedom of Information, be assured that if there is any good or benefit to this law, it is not for the MPP nor for the NDC, but to you and your coalition and the good people of Ghana. That we are opening the sunshine on darkness, on corruption, which remains a debilitating act undermining our national development. And therefore, corruption hates darkness. And when it hates darkness, that's why freedom of information belongs to the category and generation of legislation we call the sunshine laws. That's why you have the Whistleblower Act, Public Officers Liability and Accountability Act. The GJ today have a public code of conduct. Parliament has a code of conduct. The executive has a code of conduct. All of it is meant to shine so that there's more openness and transparency in the business of governance. Be assured that the minority and majority are in harmony to collectively fight corruption, to deepen the sunshine on the darkness of corruption because of its debilitating impact. And we will support wholeheartedly and in a bipartisan manner the passage of a freedom of information bill. Therefore, let's wait for it to be introduced and be assured that we will continue to support public policy 
that fires economic graft and economic uh, criminality. And therefore, the twin bills of freedom of information and broadcast bill, parliament is not and cannot and will not be in a dilemma. Parliament will wait for its introduction. And you should understand procedure. Once the civil parliament laps, all other bills have to be reintroduced. Once it's reintroduced, and I'm sure the president of the coalition, I was a signature to your coalition in opposition, supported you in government, and will repeat same with my minority in opposition. I thank you for the opportunity.